Hello and welcome to this very quick tutorial on how to design for risograph printing using the Affinity Photo program. Um, we are going to go over some super basics about how the risograph works, how it sees data, and how we can best emulate and convert between the way the risograph sees the world and the way that we do with our screens and software. So we're going to start by getting a new document created in Affinity Photo. Uh, it's good to use documents that are the same size as the paper you'll be printing on. So we have letter selected here. And we're going to start uh, with an RGB8 color format um, set for a transparent background. Um, this is just a, one of the better ways to um, have your screen image actually represent what things will look like on the page. So we hit Create. And voila, very exciting, very transparent uh, background. I'm going to add a pixel there here in the uh, edge of the screen. There's this checkerboard symbol. And I've got white set as my color. Pick my flood tool uh, tool here in the left and just give us a nice blank background. The blank background's not a good place to stop. So let's go ahead and add some shapes. Um, we can use the polygon tool uh, here in the corner to create an exciting circle. Uh, or maybe we want more of a rectangle shape, all is possible. We can give that rectangle shape a kind of jaunty angle. Um, maybe we want to add, I don't know, an exciting diamond. Thrilling, thrilling stuff. Um, but again, white is not a very exciting or dynamic or indeed printable thing to do on a white page. Um, so let's go ahead and add some colors. Um, one common way to add colors uh, in Affinity is to click on the fill square here and make sure that you have RGB hex sliders set um, as the interface mode. And you can see here next to this hashtag, there's a set of alphanumeric values we can enter that correspond to very, very precise color formula. And we happen to know the color formula that correspond to risograph inks. Um, you can find these on stencil wiki or um, on a poster in our lab or any number of places. And I'm gonna go ahead and just enter some of these right here, right now. So we have fluorescent pink, which has FF48B0 as its code. We enter that, hit enter, and suddenly we have a perfectly correct pink uh, diamond. Um, let's go ahead and make a yellow rectangle. The code for yellow is FFE800. Exciting. Uh, let's say our ellipse here is going to be um, bright, bright red, why not? That code is F15060. Dynamic, exciting, thrilling. Um, and, you know, using our move tool, uh, we can go ahead and make sure this is as dynamically exciting an image as it can be. Um, think about all kinds of good design principles that I, I am certainly not going to lecture you on here and now, here today. Um, but we will soon run into a limitation, which is that we've set our shapes to be totally opaque, um, which isn't really how Risograph Inc. works. Um, Risograph Inc. is highly transparent and finding ways to blend the, our colors and uh, uh, discover new, new values is part of the fun of Risograph printing. So one way that we're going to go ahead and emulate that on Affinity uh, is through its blend mode options. And these can be found in the layers bar uh, here under what is norm normally set as normal. But if we select that bar and hit multiply, we will begin to uh, affect how we see our, our program blend inks on our screen. And if you want to do those all at once, you can hold down shift and then click on the top, click on the bottom, and there you go. We're all multiplying. So we've got a very beautiful, beautiful image. Um, I don't know, let's go ahead and also add um, a blue triangle just for fun because we also have blue at MLab and it's a nice bold color. Uh, its code is 325584. Five, and there we go. Look at all this. This is a thrilling image. Um, 
And uh, normally, if we were going to want to print this, we would, of course, um, go ahead and load a specific ink, ink color into the Risograph printer. And the beautiful thing is that you can even print it from within Affinity Photo. So we would deselect everything that isn't blue, and we have our blue ink in, and we would hit uh, File, Print, and we would choose um, the Rizzo EZ 2X 1U series, um, uh, or whatever your equivalent may be in the printer menu, hit Properties, and we would set things up according to the Rizzo print settings. Uh, and go. And you would, you know, then move on to red with red loaded into the risograph, to yellow with the yellow ink cartridge in there, and so on and so forth. Um, this is certainly a way to do things. Um, you can absolutely print this way. But if you do, you'll, you'll soon run into a limitation, um, which is that uh, no matter how beautiful and vivid your colors look here on the screen, on the Rizzo printer, they're going to look kind of washed out, kind of desaturated, um, overly light. Um, why could this be? Um, the problem afoot here is that risographs um, are, are simple, beautiful beasts, uh, and they are designed to only think in black and white, um, in part because uh, certainly for our printer, for most printers, there's only one ink cartridge in there at a time. And so the code that stands behind our, our digital image here is outputted to the Rizzo in a way such that it only says print more or less color here greater degrees of white or, or of, of black or, you know, not white because the printer doesn't print in white, but um, yeah, greater degrees of tonal, tonal um, saturation. So we can kind of simulate what that looks like by converting this image into grayscale to see what that data looks like. And so we can do that by clicking on the document tab, uh, convert uh, format, and instead of RGB8, we can select a gray eight, hit convert, and suddenly we see that the Rizzo is getting data that looks pretty, pretty different from what we saw on the screen before. So the, the, the yellow here used to be really, really bright, really, really punchy, really, really visible. But yellow, of course, is not a very dark color, right? Um, when we convert it to grayscale, we can see that it's quite light. And so if we send um, what was our yellow rectangle to the Rizzo printer, we're only going to tell it to print maybe like 40% uh, strength we're not gonna get that super saturated, beautiful yellow. And that's a real problem if that's, you know, the aesthetic we're hunting for, if we want to really um, reach for the things that make Rizzo images pop. So we need to change our strategy. And to uh, get us there, I'm gonna switch things back, hitting Control Z to uh, go back to our RGB image. And we're back in our RGB color profile. And I'm going to select all, select each shape, and I'm going to take our fill color back to black. Because what we want to tell the risograph printer is print as much ink here as, as you would to go full blast, right? Give us some fully saturated colors. Print 100%. And 100% means deepest, darkest black in terms of the data that it receives. Um, so, you know, if, if we liked what this looked like, um, this could be one way of finishing things off. And we would then go ahead and um, print each color. And it would probably be helpful for us to, you know, label these colors so we know what the heck they are. I think we had a yellow rectangle. Um, let's say we had a blue triangle. I'm hoping this was red. And I'm hoping this was pink. I could have got it wrong. Um, at any rate, um, we can get there uh, and have our cake too if we go ahead and, and create tint layers. Um, so tint layers are uh, something that in Affinity we have to assign as a, as a subordinate to a parent group. So what I've done here is I've, I've clicked on the add new pixel layer button four times. So I have four new pixel layers here. And I'm going to go ahead and use my flood tool on the side here uh, to flood these layers each 100% with our Rizzo colors. So I can do that by um, double clicking on the foremost of the circles in my color selection and entering in the hex. Or because I've already entered these in, um, I, Affinity saves our, our re recent colors. So here I have blue, that's nice. Here I've got red. 
I've got yellow and I've got pink. So I've got my four colors and I'm going to drag them to the corresponding shapes. So I'm going to hold down uh, my left mouse button, it's left, and I'm going to drag uh, my color directly below my shape that corresponds. And this is, can be sometimes a little tricky because affinity allows us to assign different relational values within groups between parent and child layers in a couple of different ways. So one wrong way to do it would be to drag directly below the pictograph or to drag directly beside the pictograph. What we want to do is drag directly below the text, the title of our layer. So directly below the words pink here. And then I release my button and it's assigned. And I'm just going to do this with each of our corresponding tint layers until they're all tucked in. And here we have our beautiful image again, uh, all good to go. And, you know, maybe I will use this opportunity to fit it, fidget around, adjust my design, make it ever more beautiful. Um, I have many options. I could also, you know, perhaps I want this blue to be a little bit lighter actually. So I'm going to reduce the opacity of this layer. So it's gonna print at 60% power rather than 100%. Blue can be kind of dark. Um, the yellow, however, I wanna keep it 100% because it's um, already pretty light um, and, and extrably so. And I kind of like where the rest of this is going. Um, you know, all, all the better for it. Um, and when I'm ready, when it's time to print, um, I'm going to turn off all of the layers except the one that I'm printing in. And I'm gonna turn off the tint layer. So I'm just sending this gray value directly to the Rizzo. I'm gonna hit file, print, and select the Rizzo printer. And I have a couple of extra steps uh, at this point. I hit properties, I hit image, and um, uh, we can talk more about this later, but um, you've got some options for how you want things to shift around. Um, I recommend hitting um, screen covered as your screening type. Um, and then uh, this is very, very important. You need to adjust your screen angles between different colors um, with about a 30 degrees difference between them. So I'm going to say start printing at 15 um, and I'm going to specify what color I've got loaded in to the printer, what, what I'm printing, and then hit OK. Uh, hit OK again, and off it will go to print. And then with that done, I am going to go ahead and jump to my red. Um, I'm going to load you know, a new cartridge of ink into the risograph. Um, I've got my 100% black layer sending super, super punchy color um, out to the Rizzo. I'm going to print um, once again, dipping into the properties of my printer menu, selecting a new color and adjusting my screen angle. So I'm going to go to 45 degrees um, here. Uh, the reason that we bother to specify different screen angles between different colors of ink is that if we don't, and if we send them all um, like skyrocketing ahead, um, uh, sometimes it's going to be the case that all of these dots of ink are going to align in really funky ways and produce unexpected patterns that we don't really want. This is called a moiré pattern. So one really, really key thing to keep in mind as we get our prints up and ready to go is that uh, we do need to keep adjusting the angle. Uh, again, usually by about 40 degrees or 30 degrees between colors. Um, and off we go. And if you're printing in um, the studio, you will soon find that uh, you know, uh, to print multiple prints um, requires at least an hour um, of drying time between ink layers, probably more, um, if you are printing um, fully saturated, beautiful images, um, like our nice dark triangle of black, which will be highly fluorescent, beautiful pink when it comes out on the machine. Um, so the speed with which I'm blowing through this all in the tutorial will not represent your experiences on the machine, but, um, you know, helps us speed run for the purposes of uh, YouTube tutorials. 
here. Um, my max degree is 90, so I'll just end there with my fluorescent pink. Uh, send it off, um, you know, as if as if I were in my uh, fourth hour of printing here, um, probably more, maybe a couple of different days just to be on the safe side. Um, because again, um, the Rizzo uh, is a mechanical device and it has a little wheel that sits in this part of the page. Uh, maybe I will even go so far as to use um, an exciting red scary rectangle um, to, to illustrate this. Uh, the, yeah, the ruler on the machine um, pulls paper into the machine um, roughly in this spot. So especially if you have any kind of ink on this part of the page, you can expect that ink will smudge pretty dramatically unless it's been dried, dried for maybe a whole day. Um, so if I were to, you know, think about my print strategy for this image, and consider my image in its full beauty <laughs> with all of my wonderful translucent Rizzo inks. Um, it seems like my red layer and my blue layer are gonna cause trouble. Uh, this means I would probably print them last. Uh, and this means that I would definitely wait a very healthy amount of time between um, print prints um, before I run uh, one than the next. Um, so yeah. Uh, hopefully this helps you um, print more vivid, beautiful prints, and then also troubleshoot a couple of print issues and smudges that could come your way um, down the road if you are uh, not adjusting your screen angles, printing too quickly between layers, and not heating the danger zone of um, the roller input area on the page. I will leave it there. Um, more tutorials to follow with more complicated forms of photo manipulation, but this is the basics and I hope that they were enjoyed. Take care.